Hello, I'm Atuba George and I'm so blessed of God to be bringing God's truth to you today. Praise God. Before we go into today's broadcast, can we call for our daily bread? Are you ready? Join me in faith. Releasing your faith. What does it mean to release your faith? I've told you. It's believing that what you are about to say will come to pass. So do that right now as we make this demand. Say, Father, I demand from you my daily bread. It's coming to me now in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise God. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Now, we've been talking about the glory of Jesus. And let's look at our text from John chapter 17 and verse 22 see john 17 and verse 22 it says and the glory which thou givest me i have given them that they may be one even as we are one i know sometimes you're like every day you read the scripture i told you yesterday every time you look at it the word of the lord comes to you now this is how this is how one can remain, you know, sometimes when we do Bible study, you remain in one place for several days. So you tell yourself, I'm going to study the book of Genesis, you know, and I'm going to finish it in maybe 51 days or, or whatever, maybe one chapter a day. Then you realize three days gone, you're still on one chapter, not because you are lazy, but especially when your heart is enlightened. You read something there like, hold on, wait. And then you get to even this point where you said, ah, maybe this is why God told me to study this Genesis. Maybe it's not the whole study of the whole thing. Maybe God wanted me to see this. You see that? Because you remember Jesus said the Holy Spirit will guide us into all truth. So sometimes the Spirit of God does that. You know, He tells you, go study the book of Genesis. You now tell yourself, you know, that's the thing about, you know, us and him. We always conclude too early. See that? I've, I've, I've seen situations where the Lord says to someone, um, travel to another city. And <laughs> imagine the Lord telling you, travel to another city. Travel, travel, travel. And then you're struggling with it. Oh God, I don't have the money to go to that city. I don't have the money to stay there. If I travel there, I don't know anybody. They have to lodge in the hotel. I need money for all that. Oh Lord, pre pre provide the money, provide the money. Hmm. Until one day the Lord says, why don't you act by faith and believe me? Why don't you take the step to go? Hmm. All right, I'll go. And then you find your way to the park. And as you get to the park, you see something written on a signpost there. And you see that thing and you're looking at it and looking at it and looking at it. And then you realize, hey, this answers what I've been asking for the past three years. Oh, wow. Okay, I'm traveling to the other city. And then you go to the bus station and you want to pay your fare, and the Lord says, don't, you don't need to travel again. You're fine, go back home. Ah, what did I come to do here? Oh Lord, what, what's this thing, what's this thing? And you keep going, mm, can you imagine? God told me, and then the Lord says, hey, I wanted you to see that thing that you saw. Oh, <laughs> and, then, and then you go, why didn't you just tell me that you wanted me to see something at the park, seeing, he communicates with us the way we will receive his word. Now that's the challenge a lot of people have. They find it difficult to understand his speech. So the spirit of God communicates with you the way you can understand his voice. And not just understanding his voice, understanding his voice in terms of hearing him, understanding his meaning. 
So, so that's why the Lord will tell you, go study the book of Genesis. And then, oh, okay, okay. You now start looking at how many chapters are in Genesis? How long is it going to take me to finish? Meanwhile, what he wants you to see is just in chapter 1 and verse 2. <laughs> God. And then you get the, the Spirit of God was moving over the surface of the waters. Like the Spirit of God was moving over. For some reason, you can't get past it. And then the Lord begins to speak to you. You remember what I was talking to you about two days ago. And this is how my spirit begins to move over the situation. Oh, wow, 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 wow. And then you finish all that revelation and, and meditation and say, ah, the Lord said I should finish the book of Genesis. I should read the book of Genesis. And then you go back, you read verse 3, read, everything looks so like it's not entering at all. See? And then sometimes because people don't understand these things, you begin to condemn yourself to say, I think I'm lazy. Can you imagine? God told me to read the whole book of Genesis and I can't even go past chapter 1. I think I have a problem. And his problem is, I think the devil is really making me tired of studying the scriptures. The thing is there that you concluded so quickly. You did. Praise God. Allow the Holy Spirit to guide you. And the more you the more you grow in understanding Him, the more He communicates more plainly to you. Now, now here it says, The glory which the glory which thou givest me, I have given them. This is Jesus speaking. And then he says, The purpose of him giving us the glory, the glory will both establish that, that the glory is the Holy Spirit. Okay. Now he says that they may be one even as we are one so the desire of jesus is that we be one the same way he and the father are one so there is this thing about the oneness and jesus is not ashamed to bring us in to that oneness with him now you remember if we go to the beginning god said let us make man in our image and after our likeness now that's the desire of god that's what god said and that's what god created because the bible says so god made man in the image in his image in the, in the image of him in the image of god created him man male and female created he them you see now jesus now comes and says you know, I, I thought one time, and, and I mean, I, I taught like I was teaching, and I said something, I like, which is the truth. Adam was not in the image of God. Not because God changed his mind. Now, now that's the thing. Sometimes when you say certain things, people don't understand where you're coming from. And then they, they, instead of listening to the whole message, they they conclude so early and say ah can you imagine what this person say? you know someone listening to you and, and just go off at that moment say ah i don't believe this but how can you say how can you say adam was not in one god say let us make man in our image hey listen some people feel adam lost his glory when they sinned no sir no he was not in the image of god Adam was flesh. The, what God created in Genesis chapter 1 is a spirit because God is a spirit. So now you find Jesus coming years later, thousands of years later, and saying to the Lord that the glory which you have given me, I have given them so that they will be one as we are one. So Jesus here is testifying that man is not one with God. So man is not in the image and likeness of God. But that Jesus also was testifying that what God said is what his, his mind still is. Man, he wants man to be in his image and his likeness. So he wants man to be one with him. So Jesus here, and I told you this, that the reason Jesus came is to give us life. He was to bring man in to this place of oneness in the same image and likeness with God. And this is the one thing that makes God God, even the spirit of God, which is the glory that Jesus has given to us. So when Jesus now said that they may be one, you ask yourself, if Jesus wants us to be one, 
as he is one with the Father. Then you want to know who is Jesus? Who is Jesus? Because if our minds don't align with his mind, we will never understand what he's saying and they will never be what he wants us to be. So the question then is, who is Jesus? Jesus himself asked this question, talking to his disciples in the book of Matthew. He says, who do, who do men say that I am? You know, they said, some say you're this, some say. Then he looked at them and said, what about you? Who do you say that I am? And Peter spoke up. I want you to listen to what Peter said. Peter spoke up and says, you are the Christ, the son of the living God. God and Jesus was so amazed when he said those things and Jesus himself looked at Peter and said hey guy Peter flesh and blood did not reveal this to you because the truth is this flesh and blood doesn't have that information no one ever had that information see that that I'm using I want to use this to bring something to to light okay so Peter looking at Jesus who everybody saw was a man the best they thought of was he was an anointed man. In other words, he was a prophet. He, he had powers to do miracles and things. And, and Jesus said, who do you say that I am? And Peter was bold enough. Now, Jesus had never told them this. See, he had never told them this. But then here is Jesus asking, who do you say that I am? And Peter says, you are the Christ. And that's a big statement that can cost Peter his life in the presence of Jewish people or the leaders of the synagogue. How dare you call him man, the Christ? Do you know what you're saying? Now, what was Peter saying? Peter was saying, you are the Holy Spirit. I come near Baratia. That's what Peter was saying. Christ means Simply put, you know, all definitions people will give you. Simply put, Christ means the Holy Spirit. Yes. So, Jesus was actually saying, you are the Holy Spirit. Huh. So, when Jesus looked at Peter and says, hey, Peter, flesh and blood did not reveal. So, what Jesus was saying at that moment is, Peter, God has come true to you. And note, he said, flesh and blood did not reveal this to you, but my father in heaven. Maybe we should read it so you just know that oh, this pastor is not just saying things from his mind. Praise God. Oh, Nishakaba. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Matthew chapter 16 and verse 17. I want you to see this. And Jesus answered and said to him, Blessed art thou, Simon bar Jonah, for flesh and blood had not revealed it unto thee, but my Father which is in heaven. Now this is a powerful statement Jesus made here. He, Peter just said, You are the Christ. The son of the living God. And Jesus, and you know, several times Jesus will say, the works that I do, I don't do it myself, you know. He will say, the father that dwells in me, he is doing the works. So, you see, Jesus says, the father that dwells in me. You remember when Jesus said, when they asked Jesus, teach us how to pray. And, and Jesus said, this is how to pray. Our father who art in heaven. Okay? Now, remember, he says, the Father that dwells in me. And then he comes again and says, the Father that is in heaven. Now, in this case, he looked at Peter and says, flesh and blood did not reveal this to you, but my Father who is in heaven. Now, what, what, what did Jesus mean by that statement? Jesus was saying what Peter just said. He said it because he was ordained from the very beginning 
to have this knowledge and what just transpired like i told you earlier no one had said this before no one had seen this before you know what paul said i have not seen ears have not heard neither has he entered into the heart of man the things that god had prepared for those that love him right okay now peter speaking responding to a question okay and he said you are the christ the son of the living god and jesus goes wow he said you are blessed peter because my father in heaven gave you that revelation now you will think when he says my father in heaven ah, how do i explain this to you now so you don't you don't sometimes these things are so real in our hearts but in communicating it we have to use we have to pick our words so you don't just run off and say uh, you, you know you, you you're saying what is wrong see uh, now <laughs> my father that dwells in heaven the one who revealed this thing to you peter is my father in heaven now when jesus says that he is connecting Peter to the original. See, I told you the father finished walking after six days. He rested. Okay. And the Holy Spirit is here doing the work. And here's Jesus and Peter recognizing that this is the Christ. And Peter says, there is no way you're going to know this. You should have known this. No way you could have known this truth if my father in heaven didn't choose you to reveal it to you and that's why jesus went further to say and i say to you you are peter and upon this rock i will build my church and i know people have come to say he wasn't referring to peter he was referring to peter i'll tell you the truth he was referring to peter argue it like the way you like but he was referring to peter this this is the problem with a lot of people they don't understand what he meant by i will build my church so your problem is there is no way god could have built his church on a man so some people say he was referring to the revelation upon this rock this revel no listen listen to the statement you are peter and upon this rock i'll build my church what jesus was completely talking about was because the father had chosen you to reveal who I am, it means the Father have chosen you to take up the walk from where I stop. And that's simply what Jesus was saying. No man can build the church. And the church cannot be built on a man. But God needs men walking hand in hand with him to build the church. Are you getting what I'm saying? So when he says, upon this rock, I will build my church. He wasn't, you don't picture a structure on top of a man. You understand what I'm saying? Oh, the church was built on, on Peter's grave. Oh, come on now. <laughs> so that's not what Jesus was referring to. What God was, what Jesus was referring to is, look, you're going to be the point man that God is going to use to build the church. Why would Jesus say that? The fact that my father, because Jesus asked that question for a reason. He wasn't just asking a random question. He, he, he knew that his time was coming to an end. So he needed to know who have God chosen after me for this work. He needed to know. So when he asked that question, what was he looking for? The person God have chosen will receive a revelation from God in heaven. You see that now? The same thing I said, you know, the same thing with ministers. Sometimes we're so concerned about who are we going to hand over to. And we begin to look at men who have been loyal to us, men who have been there from the beginning. We'll begin to look at all those things. Brothers and sisters, prophets, pastors, ministers, Look for men that the Father have revealed that work and your person to. If they don't know you, they can't carry on your work. Assisting you doesn't mean they know you. You must find out if they know you. And when I mean if they know you, not just they have been with you so they know me. No, if they have received the revelation of your person, if you are genuinely of God. Oh, so, so. 
Nikita recognizing that this is the Christ brought him into this place. So when Jesus said that they may be one, he was referring to we becoming him. And who is he? He is the Christ. My time is up for today, praise God. I'm going to continue. I'm going to explain, because you need to understand this. I'm going to continue tomorrow. Father, thank you. Release your grace for knowledge and understanding on the church. Let your children know you. In Jesus' name. Amen. I'll see you tomorrow. God bless you.